Hi. Okay, so today I was thinking we'll do um, just a very short technique, um, like a skill technique lesson thing. Um, because I realized there are some people who don't really draw or have not drawn much before past, whatever, kindergarten or something. So, um, how about shading? This is, I think it, this must be one of the first things I ever learned as a, as a kid that helped me, um, make drawings, make, uh, what I thought were more realistic drawings or the drawings were a little more interesting, maybe had more depth. So, um, we could talk more about color theory sometime or, um, value, you know, hues and such, but, uh, I'll just show you how to do some basic um, sh shading. So if you're working with gray paper, it's um, already a mid-range um, value. And when we're talking about value, we're talking about uh, you know, dark to light. So let's say this is like a this is the darkest material you can get, okay? I mean, um, darkest shade you can get, pretty much. I don't know. Let's say the white is the, the lightest. So that's high value, right? And that's low value. Um, and then in between is the spectrum of uh, value spectrum, grayscale. So, um, which would look something like that. I guess the, uh, this, the gray of the paper is somewhere in the middle, but um, closer to the higher range. So in a monochromatic um, image, it would look something like that. Now, um, the, having a gray paper is useful for some drawings because the white is a highlighter that kind of like makes something pop, brings it up into the for, for, forefront, foreground of your um, vision and uh, um, darker tones uh, kind of push something back into the uh, uh, well sort of <laughs> okay <laughs> and um, if you don't have too uh, if you don't have two um, say tools to work with okay let's say you're working with white then, um, and you only have one, one, um, color, tone, something to work with. Basically, the harder you press, the darker the, the color you're going to get, right? And then, um, to get a lighter, lighter, um, color or value, you just lighten up the pressure of your hand. All right, so that's... In a sense, that's that's kind of like that's what I was doing there. Except this is on white paper, if that's what you're working with. And there's a lot that can be done with that, but you kind of have to practice with your with your tools. So, if we're using crayon or color pencil, dry dry medium, that's how you would get that range. It's within with the pressure of your hand applying to it. So, um, using that blue is would be Whatever color I choose to use, that's that's what I'm working with. This is the hardest I can press with this crayon, so that's probably the darkest tone I can get with that red. And um, within here is my entire range of what I can work with when I draw. So um, if if you're just starting out with drawing, I would recommend practicing with things like a uh, Shade in some of your doodles, whatever your sketches. Like if, you're, if you're drawing um, some basic shapes, try practicing doing things like that. You know, adding some depth. The darker areas represent chat. Like it's like you're depicting shadow or the way something pushes back in space. Try drawing. Uh, and like shading in parts of it differently 
or uh, whatever, you know, your name, say, my name is uh, Fifi. Um, or something, some letters, uh, sh shade in part of it, uh, play with gradation, gradation, and, and that's just to get your hands, um, just exercises to get your hands, uh, more fluid with control of the, the tools and the medium, um, and with, with, once you've, um, got better, you know, control and fluidity with the tools, you're gonna, it's gonna be, easier for you to uh, um, draw things from life or from imagination to reflect how you want it to look like when you're when you're dealing with light or uh, uh, color color um, variations because um, another thing we can do in the future is we're gonna we can start blending colors and I'm sure you've done this in uh, grade school to some degree but um, if you're working with a limited palette you're just working with two colors let's say you got red and yellow but through how well you can control the uh tools you can start i mean you've got that range to work with right you've got the red and the yellow but also the orange and then um you've got so and that's pressing pretty hard but then you've also got the uh the range of the dark to light of Of these, uh, the hues. So um, we can make uh, images with limited color palettes, but still a, a wide range of value. And if you're a more experienced artist, I'd say like if you already, um, if that seems pretty basic to you. Uh, something you can do as a practice is to um, make a huge mess <laughs> and uh, you know, um, here, here's something I also wanted to share like and, and this could be I mean it could be for both basic and advanced. like this this whole movement this movement of your arm across your um, surface uh, that's a really good exercise to help you loosen up um, the way you 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 wield your uh, your marking tool, your brush, or whatever. Um, this 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 movement is very natural for your arm if you're right-handed, and similarly, I mean, like, if you're left-handed, it would probably feel like this, like. This is, uh, try it. If you try it, just get a newspaper or a magazine. It can have something on it already, but just, um, without caring about what it looks like, um, play with just how it, it feels to, um, mark, to mark on the surface, uh, with, with um, varying, um, degrees of pressure. Okay, and, uh, you can really take out some of your feelings this way. <laughs> It can be therapeutic. Um, you know, here, okay. So it's like sometimes try try this thing where you're drawing, where you're drawing. Um, the feeling of something, not what it looks like, but how it feels as you're looking at it, and uh, just challenging, uh, ch channeling. Of that uh, entity or that moment or experience, okay, and you let that moment speak through you. Um, and it, within this exercise, uh, you can be you're just using your hands to let that moment and that view, that vision, whatever it is. A message flow through you and uh, the resulting drawing is not so much a depiction of what you see but what that moment wanted to reveal to you uh, you know what I mean <laughs> um, so
So, um, yeah, and pick your colors intuitively if you're working with colors at all. Or maybe you're just working with value. Um, but um, I would say just don't think too much. And um, yeah, um, can you just, just breathe through it, relax, or feel, those, feel the feelings that you feel are coming up. Um, let the image create itself. I think this is a good thing to do. Um, power it off and you feel like, even if you're an experienced seasoned artist, uh, this can help you break the mold of your own expectations, um, your own uh, limitations or like definitions of yourself and what you think you, you want to make. And, you know, and then after you do this kind of meditative exercise, you can go back to drawing what it is you want, whatever it is. But you've got, you kind of like, um, work through a lot of the, the, the knots, maybe the energetic knots that were building up in your, uh, the pipelines of your creative system. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, I'm curious how it would go for you. Maybe it's something you enjoy, maybe not. You can leave feedback if you like. Um, uh, we'll probably revisit some of this. I think I can fine tune. Um, fine tune this. Um, let's approach this uh, session. Well, we can. We can go back to it uh, if you have any other questions or maybe you want to share show me what your um, work looks like after this uh, comment all right thank you and uh, I hope you have a good time drawing show me what you end up uh, experimenting with try some of these things and um, I'll talk to you again soon.